Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and we have a really cool add-on for Blender today for you game developers out there. This one is basically a one-click solution for you publishing and testing your Blender scenes in the Godot game engine. Now I do have to warn you, this one is very early on. I believe the version number is 0 .01 and with a 0 .01 release you're going to get some I don't know, 0.9 worth of pain. So do expect that. There are going to see some bugs and glitches, etc. in this, but for the most part, hey, it just works. I'm going to show you how to set it up, how to use it, and how awesome it is. So here you can see, uh, it is available at Zam... I'll link that in the linked article down below. If you want to go ahead and grab this one, it is an open source project. We'll get back to that in just a few seconds. Uh, it also works on Linux, Mac, OS, and Windows. So no matter which platform you're on, if you are using the Godot game engine and the Blender application, you are good to go. So we're going to go ahead. I've downloaded the zip already. I'll come back and show you how to get all that stuff in a second. But here we are in Blender. This is Blender 2.83.4, I believe it was. Uh, what I am going to do now is I will worship the default cube and then I will remove the default cube. Okay, so what we got to do, go to edit and then into preferences. Then we want to go into the add-ons category and do an install. This is the zip file I'm going to show you out of sequence in just a second. And then just go ahead and locate it. So it's blender2godot.zip and just go ahead and install that add-on. Uh, it will then be installed. You will see it available right there. And then finally, just click this little checkbox right there. You are good to go. You'll notice I already have a bit of a spoiler up here. Uh, but the sidebar here, the end controlled sidebar, or the using this little arrow right there, uh, you'll now see there is a new tab called Blender to Godot. And this is where the magic happens. So let's go ahead and make us an exciting level. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and let's just make a monkey. All right. So now I'm going to Shift D, duplicate that monkey. We'll grab that, move it. Shift D, uh, grab, Shift D, grab, Shift D, grab. All right, there we go. So we've got a bunch of monkeys. Let's take that last monkey, go into edit mode. We'll unwrap that guy, but all I'm gonna do is put a very simple texture on just so you can see that this can work. So go ahead, we'll do a new node-based texture and we will make him blue, uh, Badiba. All right, there we go. So there we see, we got one blue and four white monkeys. That is our level, exciting stuff, wouldn't you say? So before you continue, you're gonna see right here, it says save the blend file to continue. So we shall do that. And as this is me, that means I am putting it in my temp folder. So in my temp folder example.blend. All right, so there is our file. We've now saved it. So now what we can do is go ahead and export this out to Godot. A couple steps you got to do here. First, you got to go in here and tell it where Godot is located. So basically just navigate to where you've installed Godot and select the Godot executable. Once you've done that, you can go in here, you can define the name of your game. So Super Game 9, thousand and then this one is unfortunately and i categorize this one under a bug you do need to specify an on an icon file or it will fail out on the script thankfully i have one right there so that is one of those things if you get a script error right away check to see that you've uh, specified the name and the icon those are required and we come in here we've got a couple more settings there is an interesting bug that is going to come up in just a second um, with gravity but you notice here every model that we've got in the scene i'm still in edit mode go back to object mode Everything here can have a collider, a smart collider, a convex, a mesh collider, and so on. And I'll go convex hull is fine. You're going to notice every single thing has one. We could go ahead and turn here. I'll go ahead and turn one off. So this guy has no collider. So that one is not going to collide. Everything else should. On top of that, we've got some properties here. We can turn gravity on or off. Uh, and then we can go ahead and we can export out to Godot. You go to advanced options, you've got the option to create a project, open a project, or delete a project right here. You've also got the ability to test your game. We'll do that after we finish this process. And you've even got the ability, assuming you've installed Godot export templates, uh, you can build your game directly from inside of Blender if you so wish. So there we go. We got our five scenes here. And here's where the magic is going to be illustrated. So with all this setup, I'm going to go ahead and export out my magical scene to the world of Godot. So boom. Export it out. What this is going to do is fire up a copy of Godot. There is my scene, and we are good to go. You'll notice we have one textured guy here. They all have a convex polygon around them uh, to control the gravity, etc. You can run this example right here, or I can just go ahead. I'm going to save this scene, and we will exit out completely. So bye bye, editor. And now what I can do is basically come down here and go to test game, and directly from inside of the Godot game engine. Boom, we can test our game. Now you also notice we've got uh, WASD key control, so I can move around the mouse and we can look at things. Now you may have also noticed uh, the gravity is um, 
yeah, it, it's upside down. <laughs> and I, that, that is definitely, uh, I, I would call that a bug for sure. But that's a pretty mild one on the whole, to be honest. But if you're not dealing with gravity, by the way, you could basically just do uh, turn off gravity on the player. And then here we are back in the editor. If I go ahead and run this project, you're going to see... Boom, no bug, no gravity. But hopefully that is something that does get resolved in time. Again, you can see we've got first person controls here to look. I can use the WASD keys to navigate around my scene. And yeah, so you can use this if you are a Blender person and you wanna turn your Blender scenes into an executable so you can share it with other people or publish for the web or make it for a mobile or whatever. So if you're using this as a, a Blender user and you wanna showcase your ability in some ways new, you can basically export it directly out to the Godot engine and you don't even really have to ever touch the Godot engine here. Or you can use this basically as a project generator so then when you come in here, you will find all of the stuff is set up for you. And then you can just take over on the Godot side of things. So if you want to start, you know, if you want to change the default player controller or uh, which you can see here is controlled by script. So right there, this is controlling the WASD key movement of the player in the scene. If you don't want that behavior, you can, of course, go in and start overriding that behavior and basically use this simply as a bridge to export from one location to the other. Hopefully gravity, you know, works its way up, down, down or up. Um, I think it's just a matter of flipping a sign somewhere. So it's not a huge deal, but obviously gravity is, is a little bugged right now. And as I said earlier on, if you do not provide this field right here, so let's just go ahead and, and we'll delete that. And now I'm going to do an export, kaboom. So do be aware, there are a couple of fragilities here, but for the most part, it just works. Provide all the fields that it's asking for and you are good to go. And then again, you can uh, take one of two approaches. You could basically just straight out build your game uh, for various different platforms, assuming once again that you have installed the build templates on the Godot side of things. That's a very simple process to do for the most part. And I've covered it in other tutorials, so I'm not going to go through it right there. But if that is the case, you never have to actually touch the Godot game engine, and you can create an executable, a simple one, but an executable showcasing your uh, Blender skills, which is kind of cool. Or again, if you're using Blender as your level editor, this is a nice link or integration between the two platforms. Uh, so definitely something worth checking out. Again, it is at a 0.1 release, and for 0.1, hey, it works really quite well. So you see here, for Blender 3D artists and game developers, a free tool, GPL or MIT right now, by the way, the code is MIT, which, hey, by the way, if you need our help deciding, stick with that. MIT. It's the license that Godot is under and, and we're happy and almost nobody likes GPL. So if you're going to have to pick between the two, go MIT. We'll love you for it. Uh, develop for quick scenario testing and virtual tool deploying. Uh, Blender Godot is a Godot 3D add-on that exports a Blender 3D scene to a Godot engine project. The add-on is in the alpha state, has lots of bugs, and, um, and it works as it is currently. Sorry. Here, are, uh, see the known issues below. I see one of the known issues is gravity. Never actually looked at that known issue. Blend file have to be saved. Game update not allowed. Icon required. Oh, yeah. So the icon required is a known issue. Uh, the the gravity the gravity upside down thing though uh, that's a different thing. By the way, if you want to look at the process of installing the um, the templates, they are available in this document actually. So I'll link this down below. If you want to get into more details about how you can go about doing this and using this, it's very straightforward though. I basically just showcased everything you need to know. Uh, the, the zip file is available right here. I will link this in the linked article as well. Really all you need to do, download this guy and go through the add-on process like we started with. And if for some reason you want to go get into the code, the code is hosted up on GitLab. I will make that available as well. As I mentioned right off the hop, right now it is listed as, hey, oh, I went into the readme. Sorry, I meant to go into the license. Currently, MIT, my vote, please stay with MIT. MIT is the best source license. Unless, of course, you're trying to force everyone to stay open source. In which case, yeah, go with GPL. It just makes your project a lot less useful, especially for people in a potentially commercial setting. So if you're still trying to decide which one to go with, my vote, definitely MIT. I'd be interested to hear from the rest of you guys. Give your vote, GPL or M MIT. Comments down below. And what do you think of this? Are you a Blender user that wants to have the ability to showcase your work? If that's the case, uh, this is one of the easiest solutions out there. You know, there's a lot of projects out there, things like uh, Blend for Web and, and similar. But this one, it, it just 
kind of works flawlessly. And really all you need is Godot on the back end and Godot is tiny. It's like a, you know, a 50 megabyte install. So this could be one of the best ways for a Blender developer to, or a Blender artist to turn their project into an executable if they so wished. And of course it is just genuinely useful for uh, Blender or Godot developers that want to do their level work and exporting out from Blender and into the Godot engine. So I'd be interested in hearing what you have to say, what you think of the licenses and all that. And I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.